Semper Fi, everyone, and welcome to the latest installment of Recon Jack. I'm your host, United States Marine Corps veteran and living historian Chuck Lynch. On today's episode, I'll discuss the exploits of John Marshall Gamble, who was an officer in the Marine Corps during the early 19th century. He was the first and remains the only known U.S. Marine to command a U.S. Navy ship commanding the prize ships Greenwich and Sir Andrew Hammond during naval actions in the Pacific during the War of 1812. The year 1812 brought with it yet another war. This time it was the British who raided United States merchantmen and who forced U.S. seamen to serve in the English Navy. They were also spreading their control from Canada south over the Great Lakes region and down into fertile American frontierland. The aroused western states urged a declaration of war which came on 18 June 1812. During the two and a half years of fighting, the Marine Corps, now 1,300 strong, fought on both land and on sea. The Corps added much to its young history, actions which Marines themselves talked about of which they became proud. Unfortunately, there were also grim defeats. On 1 June 1813, the USS Chesapeake, commanded by U.S. Navy Captain James Lawrence, met the HMS Shannon in a duel off the coast of Boston, Massachusetts. At first, the Chesapeake's broadside sent the Britisher reeling, but when it began to take punishment, some of the Chesapeake's poorly disciplined crew deserted their guns in a panic. Captain Lawrence was wounded and while being carried below to die, gave his last and immortal instructions, don't give up the ship. Many of his sailors did not answer to the command, but fled below when the British boarded the wreckage of the Chesapeake. On the upper decks, however, Marines under Lieutenant James Broom held to their stations until all were killed or wounded. They fought from the tops until the Shannon's guns cleared them from aloft in a brutal havoc of falling bodies. The jobs done by the Marines went on from battle to battle and place to place as their traditions began to flower. Unfortunately, there were no exploits in the records of the Marine Corps to compare with those of a lieutenant named John Marshall Gamble. Born in Brooklyn, New York, Gamble was commissioned a second lieutenant in the Marine Corps on 16 January 1809 at the age of 17. His adventures began on 22 October 1812 when, in command of 31 Marines, he set sail with Captain David Porter on the USS Essex. Porter made his way to the Pacific Ocean where he captured three British whalers in the Galapagos Islands and manned them with American crews. Though Marine officers were not supposed to be able to sail ships, Porter placed one of his prizes, the Greenwich, under the command of Lieutenant Gamble. One day in July, Porter sighted three enemy sails. His fleet gave chase, and it fell to Lieutenant Gamble to match his seamanship against the Britisher Seringapatam, the scourge of American whalers in the vicinity, and deemed the biggest British threat to American whalers in the South Pacific at the time. From the bow of the Essex, Captain Porter watched Gamble's maneuvers with interest, peering through his spyglass and nervously chewing a wad of tobacco. At one point, as a Greenwich neared the Sering Appetum, Porter exclaimed aloud, Now, Mr. Gamble, if you'll only stand on course for five minutes and then tack, I'll make you a prince. That, as it turned out, Gamble did exactly that. He intercepted the Britisher, loosed a number of broadsides into it, and forced the ship to strike its colors. On 14 July 1813, Commodore Porter wrote of Lieutenant Gamble, Allow me to return to you my thanks for your handsome conduct in bringing the Saring Appetum to action, which greatly facilitated her capture, while it prevented the possibility of her escape. Be assured, sir, I shall make a suitable representation of the affair to the Honorable Secretary of the Navy. Autumn came, the ships needed refitting, and there was danger of British cruisers in the vicinity. So Captain Porter put into the Marquis Islands where he built a base and a fort on the island of Nakuhiva. Life on the island was never peaceful. The shifty Marquesian natives continually fought among themselves and on more than one occasion the Americans had to join in the local wars. By December 1813, two of the ships were ready to go to sea again. Captain Porter sailed them from harbor bound for the South American coast leaving Lieutenant Gamble behind with 21 men and the remaining three ships. Porter's instructions to him had an ominous sound. He was told to hold the base at Nukuhiva until Porter returned. 
I hope you enjoyed today's episode of Recon Jack, and perhaps you've learned something new. I've certainly only scratched the surface of some of the topics discussed today, so stay tuned for part two of this episode as I continue to explore the hallowed history, tradition, and individuals of the United States Marine Corps. Please feel free to like this video, subscribe to my channel, click that notification bell, and leave a comment in the section below. I always enjoy interacting with you folks and seeing the growth of this channel. Also, don't hesitate to tell a friend or family member or to email directly to me at recon underscore jack at hotmail.com. Until next time, Semper Fi and carry on.